this is a harder exam problem. We want to calculate the change in internal energy for the combustion of 1.20 grams of octane, which is C8H18, at 298 Kelvin. Okay, so we're given a balanced chemical equation, and we have the enthalpy change for the reaction. This is the standard enthalpy change, or the enthalpy change of combustion, the heat of combustion for this reaction, all of that's the same stuff. Under one bar is negative 5,470 kilojoules per mole. So we want the change in internal energy, so we're going to use the same equation like we did before, the change in enthalpy equals the change in internal energy. And then this time we're going to go straight to the change in moles times RT, because we're not given any information about pressure and volume. So we want the change in internal energy, so we'll solve for that, equals the change in enthalpy minus the change in the moles times RT. Now, we'll plug in what the change in enthalpy is, negative 5,470 kilojoules per mole, minus the products, minus the reactants of the gaseous, uh, only the gaseous compounds, because the gases are what creates the pressure or reduces the pressure. So now you might be wondering why this water is not a gas. So when this reaction occurs, we do produce gaseous water, but at 298 Kelvin, the water is a liquid. So you can imagine when this reaction occurs, it may heat up, but initially you're at 298 Kelvin. It reacts, heats up, and then it cools back down to 298 Kelvin. This is, these are the products back once you're back at 298 Kelvin. So water would be a liquid. So we don't include it. So uh, the change in moles would be 16, 16 moles minus the moles of the gas. So there's 20, 27 moles. And again, uh, this is per mole of the reaction. So if you think of this per mole, of the reaction. So every time one mole of this reacts, we need two moles of octane, 25 moles of oxygen, and we produce 16 moles of CO2 and 18 moles of water. So this is very, very important to get your stoichiometry right. So even though this is moles, this is actually the moles of your products minus reactants every time a mole of this reaction occurs. So that this mole is the same as this mole right here. Okay, uh, R, we want the R that has joules in it, 8.314 joules per mole Kelvin, and the temperature is 298 Kelvin. Okay, so we'll plug that into our calculator R. Actually, what, what, what I'm going to do, I'm going to do the second term first, because the second term gives us the work. So, 26 minus, so 16 minus 27 times 8.314 times 298, that's negative... Now, this is in joules, right? This is in joules. So if we want it to be in kilojoules, we would divide this by 1,000. One kilojoule for every 1,000 joules. So I'll do, I'll do that right now, actually. Divided by 1,000. So negative 27.25. So negative. Now, this is negative. So we're subtracting a negative. So I'm just going to make this positive, right? This, we're, this is negative. But this whole thing is negative. So we have subtracting a negative makes it positive. So we have 27.25. So plus 27.25. And in terms of our units, these moles cancel out with these moles. We have joules cancel out with joules. And Kelvin cancels out with Kelvin. So we're left with kilojoules per mole. That's kilojoules per mole of the reaction. That's super important. It's kilojoules per mole. Actually, I'm going to write mole of the reaction right here because we're going to need to differentiate between that. So this is 5470 kilojoules per mole. The, the work done doesn't change too much. And this is the work done. So this, this here, this is the work performed by the reaction. Work equals negative P delta V for a constant pressure process. If there's no other work, just pressure volume work. Uh, this is equal to negative NRT. So this truly is uh, the work done per mole of the reaction. Now we can add these two terms together, negative 5470 plus, oh, negative 5470 plus 27.2 is negative 5442.8, negative 5442.8, uh, the moles of reaction, I'm going to write that in here, um, kilojoules per mole of the reaction. So this is our delta U 
per mole of the reaction here, but we want it for 1.8 grams of octane. So we're going to convert this, these moles, into grams of octane. So we're going to start with this number right down here, negative 5,442.8. We, we're not significant to that many digits, right? This is, we have all three sig figs, so... Um, Actually, we yeah, we'd have three sig figs here, three sig figs here. So we only have three significant figures of uh, three significant three significant digits. <laughs> that was a hard one to say. Okay, j kilojoules per one mole of the reaction. Now we want to get to octane, right? So we want to cancel out moles of the reaction, and we want moles of our octane. So that's C8H18, uh, I think it is. Now, for every one mole of the reaction, every time a mole of the reaction occurs, we need two moles of octane. So it's a one to two ratio. Now that we're in moles of, of octane, which is what we want, we can get to grams. So we'll use the molar mass. We want to cancel out moles of octane. I always use the, do the units first. If you do the units first, like I'm doing here, you can always see that they'll cancel. Uh, so that at least we got our unit analysis right. So, and we want grams of C8H, oh, it's H16, no, H18, 16, oh, I did 16 again, there we go, holy, all right, so for every one mole of octane, we got to find out, use the molecular formula to find out what the molar mass is, uh, I just googled it just to make it quick and easy, <laughs> you can get it from the periodic table, so the molar mass of octane is 114.23, so 114.23, and then our moles of octane cancel out, which gives us kilojoules per gram of octane, uh, which is what we want. Okay, so we'll plug this in. Uh, oh, I got this number right here already, so I'm going to keep that in my calculator. Divided by 2, divided by 114.23, and that is negative 23.8. Now we have three significant figures, so yeah, negative 23.8. This is significant to here, to this decimal place, or place value, negative 23.8 kilojoules per gram. Oh, we're not done. We're not done, right? We want it per 1.20 grams of octane, not per gram of octane. Uh, so let's, let's get to, we got to multiply it by 1.2. So negative 20. Three, oh, sorry, it's kind of messy here. Negative 23.8 kilojoules per every for every one gram of C8H18. We want to multiply that by 1.20 grams of C8H18 so that our grams of CH818 cancel out and we're just left with kilojoules. So it's that's how many kilojoules are released for this many grams. And we still got the number there, so times 1.2 times 1.2 is negative 28 point negative 28.6 because we have three sig figs so negative 28.6 negative 20 yeah that's right negative 28.6 kilojoules released for every 1.2 grams of octane sweet beans all right hope you enjoyed it i got so many other videos on thermodynamics and other aspects of chemistry also in physics and math so thanks for watching and good luck on your exams midterm final exams and i'll see you in the next video cheers